Hello, everybody. How are you today? I am Dr. Vahid Aryadust, and in this screencast, I'm going to discuss several terms that are commonly used, frequently used in nowadays uh, research and in, even in daily life conversations. And these include foundation models, large language models, and generative artificial intelligence, and some related terms. Okay, before every, uh, I start, I would like to share my slides with As you can see in this slide, um, the terms foundation models and large language models are somehow related to each other. But before starting to discuss them, I would like to start off by defining NLP or natural language processing, which is a famous term, a common, commonly used technique in um, computer sciences and also in related fields like um, uh, corpus linguistics, as well as computational linguistics, and of course, uh, language assessment and applied linguistics to uh, various extents. Now, just um, a quick note here that most of what I'm going to present in this slide are extensively discussed in my upcoming book, which is right here in the corner, which is called Assessing Listening in the Age of Generative Artificial Intelligence. When the book is published, I will make an announcement if you're interested to have a look. Okay, back to the definition of NLP. NLP is a computational method that is designed to process and analyze human language. There are different ways of using NLPs or there are different, um, different functions for NLPs. One is natural language understanding or NLU. The other one is natural language generation or NLG. And there are other methods as well, which I haven't um, basically uh, in indicated here, but they include TTS or text-to-speech or automated speech recognition, and a combination of all of these technologies, that's NLU, NLG, TTS, ASR, et cetera, which will give you an SDS, which stands for Spoken Dialogue Systems. These are NLPs, and they have been very useful. They have helped us in different fields. The history of NLP and these sorts of conversational AIs can be traced back to at least 1966. But even before 1966, there were scientists who were interested in developing these uh, models. In 1966, uh, as you may know, Joseph Weizenbaum developed uh, the first form of uh, computer program, which he called ELISA. And ELISA had the capability to uh, speak with humans, not in a uh, verbal form, but in written forms. And it basically played the role of a psychiatrist. Um, well, most of these early NLP programs were based based on uh, statistical rules or were just rule based. And some of you might even recall that uh, in some call centers, they used these NLPs, specifically spoken dialogue systems, which would play the role of uh, an operator on the other end of the line. And they would answer some basic questions for you. Now, for a long time, this was um, the status quo. So if you wanted to, to do one specific language-related task or other types of task, you would need to develop one specific NLP uh, that would be um, exclusively developed with uh, the aims that you had in mind. So let's, let's call that NLP1. And if you wanted to develop another NLP with a different kind of capability, you would definitely need to go through a separate process of training and data collection and fine tuning and so on. And in the same way for the third NLP, you would have to do uh, the same thing. But the question has always been whether it is possible to develop one comprehensive NLP that is capable of doing all of these tasks that separate NLPs would otherwise be able to do. It was not possible till um, after the year 2007, uh, 2017, and I'm sure that you know what happened in 2017, the uh, groundbreaking discovery of transformers and the attention mechanism, particularly the transformers, um, happened in this year. Uh, Vaswani and colleagues published their paper. And following this year, uh, a new generation of natural language processing algorithms were developed and were released. The first of which is GPT, GPT-1, which as you know, 
was developed in 2018, and it was developed by OpenAI. Uh, GPT-1 was a, a, also a groundbreaking discovery or groundbreaking invention because it had some emergent properties. I'll get to emergent prop properties later, but it could do things in, in brief that it was not uh, explicitly trained for. In 2021, 21, uh, Bomasani and colleagues uh, for the first time used the term foundation models, which refers to a massive AI model that is trained on large data and can be adapted to a wide range of tasks. So if you have developed this foundation model based on, let's say, texts, you can then fine tune it. And some people would say tune, some people would say fine tune. I prefer to use fine tune. You can fine tune it to do specifically, to specifically do some language related tasks, such as uh, the previous versions of ChatGPT, for example, ChatGPT 3.5, uh, was able to just do large uh, to to do only language specific tasks. So we refer to these as large language models. In other words, a large language model is um, a foundation model or an, an AI model that has been specifically trained and fine tuned to do language related tasks. But uh, foundation models can also be tuned to do other things, such as image processing or image generation or speech-related uh, tasks. And this will be another fun, um, ability of these models. In the available literature, people use the term generative artificial intelligence and foundation models interchangeably or generative artificial intelligence and large language models interchangeably. Uh, based on my understanding, at least in applied linguistics and language assessment, there is no universally agreed upon way of using them. But from my perspective, I think generative AI is more like a popular science terminology, whereas uh, terms like foundation models and large language models are more technical and are, are used mostly by uh, people from computer scientists. So to be more specific and precise, I would prefer to use foundation models where I mean foundation models and to use large language models where, where I use large language models. Nowadays, uh, some of the Available models which are commonly used, such as Claude and specifically ChatGPT, as this uh, at this time ChatGPT five is out. Uh, these are now multimodal, so they have got multimodal capabilities, and you can speak with them. You can have a video chat with them. You can have a um, just a written chat with them. They, you can ask them to generate codes to understand codes, and they can do a lot of things. They can they can do mathematical analysis for you, as I'm sure you have tried it out. Okay, so this brings me to another very important point about these models. According to Bomasani and colleagues, these models have two specific properties, which makes it exciting, but also anxiety inducing. One is uh, the property of emergence, emergence, and the other one is the property of homogenization. What is emergence? Emergence refers to this property, this uh, feature of this large, specifically large language models or foundation models, if you will, um, by which um, they can do tasks, they can accomplish things for which they have not been explicitly trained. For example, uh, GPT-1 could do some sort of uh, relatively sophisticated uh, cognitive tasks, which were only, um, uh, which could only be done by humans, uh, without it being explicitly trained for doing those tasks, this could do some basic mathematical analysis, basic compared with what ChatGPT five can now do, and so on and so forth. So these properties basically emerged uh, quite surprisingly uh, from these models. And that is exciting because um, you train them uh, very generally, but they um, develop some sort of abilities uh, for which the, you have not even thought about. But at the same time, it can cause anxiety because if they can do good things for us, they could also uh, cause some harm. And that's something that a lot of people have been concerned about. 
The other property here is homogenization. And it refers to the fact that most of these state of the arts models are built by adopting small set of um, models. Um, for example, BERT is one of BERT is one of these foundation models upon which many other future models were developed. Um, or GPT style ones, GPT style models such as ChatGPT itself or uh, Llama um, or um, Mistral. Mistral is one of these very good models that is very capable in generating ta text or understanding text. Or BART, B-A-R-T, which is also the foundation of some of the future um, large language models that are now commonly used in different fields. So let me wrap it up. Uh, in this video, I have discussed foundation models, which was a term that was uh, introduced by Bomasani and colleagues in 2021. I have briefly mentioned what uh, natural language processing is. I have also um, mentioned how a large language model can be created by just fine tuning foundation models. And I also mentioned that generative AI, in my view, is more like a term that is mostly used in popular science or daily conversations but it has also found its way in more technical literature. This brings me to the end of this video. I hope that you found it useful. Um, in the future, I will present more uh, of the ideas that I have uh, been discussing in my book. Thank you very much for your attention and have a great day.